I'm a spokesperson for the election office. I'll talk to a voter about why we check election results, some problems we face, ways to solve these problems. Our risk-limiting audit confirmed the results of the election. I'm a voter. I'm glad you're limiting risk, but how was the election at risk? Without checking, election results could have errors or be hacked. I thought voting machines were safe because they never connect to the Internet. Insiders and voters can insert malware on USB drives. Malware is bad. Researchers have hacked every kind of election machine they've had access to. Hacking is bad. Updates for each election can introduce both hacks and errors. I cannot say updates are bad. I know you have to update the candidates for each election. And computers need security updates. With thousands of election offices, and dozens of candidates in each, I understand there can be errors. The Brennan Center found hundreds of errors nationwide. Okay now you showed me why I need to worry. Did it cost much to audit all the contests on our ballots? We only checked one or two contests. You audited because you thought results could be wrong. Do you worry about wrong results in all the other contests? Some contests are very close. Our audit system is expensive on close contests, so we don't audit them. The state told us to check just one or two contests. We try not to worry about contests we don't audit. Well I worry about all the contests, especially the local ones that control my schools and law enforcement. To check them all can you give electronic scans of all ballots to the parties and public, to check all the tallies? Sure. More and more places do that. Do say, trust but verify. Don't say, why did hackers elect those people? Scene 2, I'm from another election office. I'll talk to a voter about hand counting, big samples being more reliable than small, using and checking electronic copies of ballots. Election machines counted all the ballots, batch by batch, and we hand counted 2% of the batches to check the election machines. What is a batch? A batch can be the ballots from a polling place, or a few hundred mailed ballots which were scanned as a batch. So if you had 40,000 ballots, in batches of 400, that's about 100 batches. Yes, and we hand counted 2%, that's 2 batches. What can you learn from 2 batches? Here's an example. Suppose a scanner error or hacker changed 10 batches. They might shift 100 ballots per batch from one candidate to another with no one noticing. So your example switches 100 ballots, in each of 10 batches. That changes 1,000 ballots, which can take 1,000 votes from one person, to add 1,000 votes to another. That would reverse the winning margin by 2,000 votes. Our audit of two batches has a 19% chance of catching them. An audit with 81% chance of missing the problem isn't good enough. How can we do better? We can spend more to hand count 20 batches, instead of two. When the problem happens in 10% of batches, like my example, we need to hand count 20 batches to have a 90% chance of finding the problem. That sounds very expensive and slow. Is there a cheaper way? We can put electronic scans of all ballots online, so the parties and public can check all contests on all ballots. So the parties and public can pay for all the checks they want. Can we trust those electronic scans that the parties and public are checking? We can also hand check some of those scans against the paper ballots, to be sure the scans are trustworthy. Do the scanned ballots show how someone voted? No. Ballots are anonymous. Even so, if state law restricts ballot copies, we might be able to share copies under a non-disclosure agreement. That would be cheaper than checking all contests yourself. Do say, we're open to new ways. Don't say, we've always done it this way tradition. Scene 3, as an election official, I'll talk to a voter about seals and locks. Checking before ballots go into storage. Knowing when digital files are reliable. I'm a candidate. When you audit elections, what do you check against? What's truth? 
We check against the sealed boxes of paper ballots from locked storage. Have you seen the YouTubes about lock picking, children bypassing seals, and Russians hacking security cameras? Well, at least foreigners can't break in from abroad. Could local crooks sneak in? For foreigners, or for their own purposes? We make people sign in and out. I appreciate you have a good sign-in system. If crooks sneak in, they won't sign in. You're right. We use the best security we can, and no security is perfect. Maybe, instead of using ballots from storage to check election records, you can check the ballots before they go into storage, to be sure the election records are accurate. Yes. Verified voting says it's ideal to use ballots to check election records the same day we get the ballots. Until ballots go into storage, volunteers from my campaign and my opponent's campaigns are watching, so no one can mess with the ballots. If we can scan ballots and check scans throughout early voting, it spreads out the workload. We'll need extra time or extra people to check election day ballots, but that's better than squeezing all our checks between election day and certification. I like spreading out the workload. And I like having a lot of the data checked before you release results on election day. If we hand check one in a thousand ballots or one in a hundred, we're checking as many as a risk limiting audit, and we can report a risk limit on every contest. So hand checking paper ballots can check that the electronically scanned ballot images are accurate. How do you make sure those scans don't get hacked later? Each electronic file has a hash value, like a digital signature. As soon as it's created, we can give that to the press, parties, candidates, and the public. A good copy of the electronic file will have the same hash value. Any change in the file later, would change its hash value, so people will know when they have a true copy. That's a great way to track digital files. The hash values tell us when digital files change. There's no similar way to detect changes in paper files. Do say, vote on paper ballots. Don't say, which are the best YouTubes on lock picking. Scene 4, as an election official I'll talk to people about. Audit software. Checking if audit software works right. I run a software company. Let me ask this. If errors or hackers changed the election winners, would the risk limiting audit tell us? Yes. We use state of the art open source software. And the audit software can't be hacked when it's running? If the audit software is hacked, someone would notice. Can we check? Not directly. In our risk limiting audits, people type each step of the audit software directly into the software, so there's no independent record if the software has errors or hacks. Usually in these audits, the public can't see the ballots or what's being typed. And in many places you can't see the cast vote records which are the basis of the audit. So who would notice if the audit software is hacked to hide errors in the election? For these audits that don't have paper records, the only checks come from people who have independent copies of the scanned ballots, and check them. Do say, we trust our elected officials. Don't say, don't sweat the small stuff. Scene 5, as an election official, I'll talk to people about Letting the public have election data Telling truth from fiction Trusting officials I'm a local elected official. If the parties or the public get electronic scans of all ballots to count, can they cause trouble by reporting false counts? People already can and do lie. Public copies let us prove it's a lie. How will you prove who's lying? When challengers take evidence to court, the court needs to tell them to post online their subtotals for each precinct. So they have to show where they found mistakes. In the precinct with the biggest difference from official totals, challengers need to show tallies and scans of all ballots. Then the public and court can check if their scans and tallies are accurate. If that checks out, it sounds like they have an honest case. Winner and loser then will check enough other precincts to see whose totals are right. If they don't present information to court they need to be scorned. Would it save confusion if you don't let anyone check? Sounds like an invitation to crooks to pick some elected officials, and no one will check. Just let officials check. Okay. Give them the budget. However, 
even if you ask officials, they probably don't trust the skill and honesty of every other official nationwide. Like any group, 99% are great. Big counties have hundreds of officials. Dozens of them have enough access to create mistakes in official reports, which we need to catch. Yes, we need to let the public check our work. Do say, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Don't say, security by obscurity. Remember. Why check election results? Catch and correct mistakes. Protect elections from false charges. How can we check election results? Release verified electronic scans of ballots, to parties and the public. Parties and public watch all steps. Join a group in your state, working for better elections. A list is at votewell.net. Tell us if we missed any.